guys and welcome back to my reborning tutorial today we're going to do something really fun and that is modeling for those of you who don't know what modeling is is basically creating an appearance on the skin of splotchiness like babies usually have or sometimes you can even see that on your skin when you're cold and your skin tone looks uneven and to achieve that we're going to use some paints cosmetic sponges or wedges but this time we're going to do something interesting with the sponge and I'll show you some of my sponges that I used for my previous reborn and this is what they're basically looking like um, just irregular spots to achieve that uneven skin tone today, never mind the yellow, we're going to do three different layers we're going to do a vein blue layer dirty purple kind of a layer and blood red color but right now I'm going to show you how to create that kind of a irregular pattern. So you could use tweezers or you can use your own fingers. And basically, first we're going to pull out like irregularly around like we did on the very first layer. You know what? I actually don't like the tweezers because they pull out just real tiny pieces. And I would like irregular bigger pieces pulled out kind of like that and then you try to pull out bigger pieces uh, on the inside too and some holes could be bigger or smaller so it looks something kind of like that so I created a pattern like that and you could do a bigger pattern like I did here for example or a smaller like I did on this yellow one but that's how you do it okay so our first sponge is ready you can also reuse your sponges, but um, and I might actually use them in the future. But just for this layer, I'm going to show you with this sponge I just made. Okay, so as I said, we're going to do three different layers of modeling. And the colors you will need for those three different combinations are Parole Red, Vein Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Plain Red Color, and Bountiful Baby Burnt Umber. Okay, let's start. So I'm going to put some um, thinning medium here. Um, and I'm going to use Bountiful Baby Pre-Mixed Color called Vein Blue. This is what it looks like. And I'm just going to use a flat brush to mix the color. Dip your brush in the thinner first and then take a little bit of color. Whoops, looks like I took already too much color. Let's see. And mix it up. You really want to just have a really, really translucent color for modeling layers. So you want to add your color gradually, probably more gradually than I just did. But anyways, you see that really faint blue? Um, I think it might be a little bit too faint. I'm going to add just a touch more color. I think this is good. So next we're going to get a limb that we're going to be painting. Let's dust it. Some dust accumulated here. So now, what we're going to do, first of all, you always have to be mixing this color because it wants to just settle on the bottom. Pick up some color with your brush and put it over the raised areas that um, you created. And I'm going to start from the thighs down because I believe babies have more mottling in their thighs and their lower legs right here than they do on their feet. Let's see, I'm going to use this wooden spatula again to help me out. There we go. Okay, here we go. And as you put this pattern on, um, you don't want to be putting it on twice in the same place, but also you don't want to be just stamping it the same way. You want to kind of rotate the sponge as you do it. See, kind of like that. So you can kind of see little spots left, right? So that's what's going to create that um, depth in the skin color. And you probably will have a hard time seeing this layer. But our next color that we're going to use, you're definitely going to be able to see it on the skin. And especially the third color we will use. So you don't want to miss any spots, you just want to hit everything evenly. After you're done with that, you're going to set your limb to dry. 
whenever you cannot get to the little fold or crease and you need to put some paint in, you can always use the other edge of the sponge and dip it in paint just a little bit and go ahead and get inside of that crease. And then with the other edge that's clean, you can pounce it out a little bit if it's too much. So we're done with the limbs and now we're going to apply the same layer on our head. And on the head and especially on the face, we're going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to use the same concentration for the head around, but I'm going to use a lesser concentration of paint on the face because I personally do not like babies that are heavily modeled on cheeks. I think they should be blushed on cheeks and nose and chin rather than like um, have spots on them because I don't think it looks natural. So in order to achieve that, um, you don't want to put a lot of modeling layers on your face. Or if you do, you just do it very, very subtly. So we're going to start on the back of the head and behind the ears. Do you see all those little spots on the head? And then we're going to go a little bit in the temples and on top of the head, a little bit in the temples here, and then just above the forehead, basically where her um, hairline would be, is where we want to model it the most. Kind of like that, do you see it? And now you can do one of two things. You could either dub off some paint, which what I think I will do, or you can um, put a few drops of paint thinner in the paint and thin the color out and then go over the face really really lightly and then I'm going to go on the forehead first and I'm gonna avoid the eyes the cheeks a little bit here a little bit on the ears behind the ears but definitely avoid the lips you don't want to put things on the lips because you don't want the lips to be blue and later on we're going to do some blue shading around the nose and lips and chin so that's when we're going to put some blue there and again behind the ears you can use the edge of the sponge and go behind the ears like this so we're going to let the limbs and the head to dry we're not going to actually bake between these three layers we're going to layer them on top of each other and while it dries I'll show you how to mix up your next color okay so we're going to clean this up we're going to add some paint thinner I like to put a little paint thinner in a little well just to clean my brush out before I mix another paint so this color is supposed to be a dirty purple color so for this color we'll be using Parole Red 02 Remember, you want your color to be translucent so you can see through it. Now we're going to use ultramarine blue, which is this beautiful blue color. We're going to be adding a little bit at a time. We're getting real close. Okay, I think it looks good, but we should get it a little darker. Okay, so this is the color that we want to have. Just wanted to show a close-up of it so you could see. Our limbs have dried now and I'm looking over it and I pretty much cannot see the blue on it. One of the frustrating parts of reborning is that you put these subtle layers on your doll and not until several layers you put on that you actually can see something. So if I would do this again, I would probably make that blue color a little darker so it will show up just a little bit on the doll. This was the blue that we did and this was the blue from my very first reborn. You definitely need to make the blue darker, which is very simple. You just add more paint and to make it lighter, you add more thinner. But at this point, I think we'll just skip it and go ahead and do our purple one. And later we'll see if, if um, the doll needs some more blue color in her. We'll add it to her later. Honestly, I don't really think that the order of uh, which layer or what part of the paint you put on the doll really matter except for a few of them. So you can go back and forth and you know do more modeling later um, after you do some blushing or or after you finish these three layers and you think that you need some more you can always add some more. So mix up your paint well. I'm going to use my old sponge 
So again, we're putting the paint um, just on the raised areas to create that um, irregular pattern. And again, we're going to start with the thigh. Oh, looks pretty nice. I think we're going to start seeing some depth in this doll very soon. But especially with a blood red color, that will be really amazing. And it's pretty nice, and I see some color on it, so the doll is coming alive. I can definitely see the purple color now, much better than the blue. We're going to be using a very similar color for creases, so you can put this color into all the creases too while you edit, because creasing is kind of a hard thing to do, especially in one sitting, so you want to do it in a um, few times while you're painting the doll. Alright, so now we're on to the third layer. We're going to put some paint thinner in. We're going to use for this layer, again, Parole Red, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, and possibly a touch of Genesis Red. So we're going to start with the red, Parole Red, and we're going to add a little more color here. Now we're going to use some brown, Burnt Umber, and the other two colors, the Ultramarine Blue and Genesis Red, we're only possibly will add just a bit off. So the main colors are Burnt Umber and Pearl Red. And the color we're trying to achieve is a dirty looking blood color. Now it doesn't sound kind of fun, but it will look fun on the doll. Okay, let's add some more red. Okay, we're making this more concentrated. It's still see-through, but um, more concentrated. Oh, it looks like I have some visitors coming. Hi guys! Hi. You having a nice time outside? Yeah. Nice. I'm almost done, okay? All right, my guests went away, and I think we should add just a little bit of this bright red, um, Genesis red color, to make it a little more brighter. Okay, let's see. Does that look like blood to you? Pretty close to the color I used before. So this is about the color you want for your final layer of modeling. Now let's see what it will look like on the vinyl. Okay, so our limb is dry again, and I'm going to start with this leg again. It helps you not to be confused as of what limb you used before, so you just start always with the same limb and finish with the same and finish with the head. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use the old sponge again. I'm going to apply it to the raised areas of the sponge. Then I'm going to try it on the paper towel. Can you see it here? Oh, it's quite red actually. Well, let's try it, and if it's too bright, um, I'll show you how to take it off. Okay, so here we go. It actually looks pretty cool. If you feel like it's too bright, you can always take a clean sponge and dip it in the thinner and go over the spots that you created. I hope you can see it. It's so hard to focus and paint at the same time. Hmm. You know what? It looks a little bit too bright for me. I'm going to take this purple sponge since we already have that color in the doll and I'm going to take some of it off. Well guys, um, I've been thinking and looking at this limb and even though it does look a little bit too bright, I think at this point I'm going to go with it and maybe after this layer I will do another blue layer of modeling since the first layer we couldn't really see. I'm just gonna go ahead and thin the paint just a little bit with the paint thinner so we don't have to take off anything. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the other limbs and the head and I definitely will dilute it even more for the head and the face because I don't want that much modeling on the face for sure. But I think on the legs especially, it's really cute. So just for comparison's sake, look at this limb and this limb. You can definitely see the difference now. Sometimes if you cannot get to certain creases, you can use either a um, paintbrush to get in there or even better, this little eyeshadow applicator. You get a little bit of paint on the edge and just go in and put that paint in. And then with the other one you can clean it up. Alright, so here we are again and back to the head. So we're going to dilute the paint a little more. And again we're going to start with the back. Dry out your sponge on the paper towel and go ahead and start. Our baby is going to really come to life with this layer. But of course there's a lot more layers after this too. Don't think that we're done yet. We're just starting. Okay, Again, we're going just on the hairline. 
just on the hairline here. And then we're going to take our sponge and wring out most of the color out. And then you're going to go over the um, forehead, a little bit of the cheeks, and under the chin here, on the other cheek again, and some ears here, and here. So there's just a little bit of color on the face, but not too much because you'll be adding color to the face with your blushing not with your modeling so I can take a clean sponge and also dab some of the paint off if I feel like I got too much somewhere but the head looks pretty cool on the back as you can see but the face looks pretty nice and light and that's exactly how I want it to be so now that you have completed all three layers of modeling you have dried all your pieces then you're going to inspect everything before you bake it but if you're happy with everything you did to the doll then you're ready to bake her at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes so I hope this video was helpful to you if you liked it please give us thumbs up and share this video with your friends subscribe click that little bell so you don't miss any of our new videos and I'll see you next time